So I am now joined by Deftones Art Director Frank Maddox. Mate, I've been looking forward to this interview all week. Um, what have you been doing? So you started working with Deftones on White Pony, is that right? I did. That was my first record with them. So what had you been doing prior to working with Deftones and had you done much in the realm of music or heavy music? Um, so prior to that, I just, uh, I just got my job at Warner Brothers at the time. And um, I knew that Deftones were coming out with a new record. I was a huge fan. Uh, I bought Adrenaline the day it came out and, um, you know, was a fan ever since going to a lot of shows. So being at Warner Brothers, we were closely tied with the, uh, the other label, which was Maverick, which Deftones were on. Um, so I kind of raised my hand at Warner's and I was like, I, I would love to work on this record. Um, I know that it's coming and I want to work on it. So fortunately enough, I, I was able to get the job. The, uh, the art director at Maverick sent my work to, to the band and management and they liked it. Um, so I was able to jump on board and work with them on White Pony. So I heard, I heard, so I've been, I've been interviewing Deftones since 2002 yeah. and I feel like I've asked them every White Pony question there is to ask in that, in that time. But with yourself, am I right in saying that you had the Pony logo first? So the Pony logo was something that the band had. Um, right. And you may have heard them recently talking about it. They actually start, they had this great idea of kind of this concept record for White Pony. Uh, and when I first reached out to them, I actually had that information as well. And um, my first meeting with them, they kind of had some loose concepts about what White Pony was and just kind of like this overall mis mystery about um, having this icon and what it could lead to. And they actually did have the pony. Um, so in one of my initial meetings, somehow via email or something, I received the uh, the little horse, which is now the um, you know the icon that's gone on to be so influential and everything. Um, but they did have that idea, and they had the icon, and um, they'd even done some tour backdrops before they even started making the album um, for one of their tours. I think on Ozfest or something that was like this big red banner, and they had the pony, and then Deftones kind of small. Um, so they definitely had the the ideas um, planted early. See, so who drew who drew the pony? Do you know? I, I got to say, I think it's a mystery. You know, um, it's between all of us, we can't quite recall <laughs> how it came about. Um, but certainly, twenty years ago, it was um, it was just kind of this mysterious image, and I think that. Had we used it at face value, I think it would have been one thing, but I think what we did with it, we really kind of like took it and ran with it um, and took it to a different level, you know? So so when when you put together, because you've worked with Deftones now on every record since White yeah. Pony, like yeah. at, what, at what point, um, specifically on White Pony, at what point did you start to hear music? Because it's obvious that... The, the music and the artwork has to go hand in hand. When did you first start hearing music for White Pony in, in, and start putting together the art concept? That's a great question. Um, and one I'm not asked a lot, which is a really good question. My first meeting with them, I flew up to Sausalito to meet with, with the guys. Um, and whenever I kind of approach a project, I always like to try to do stuff um, beforehand to present to them. So I arrived with some early kind of like ideas um, that I had. I was already incorporating the pony into some things. It was really like clean design, but I hadn't heard anything yet. So that day they played me some songs with Terry in the studio. Um, and obviously I was blown away. Um, I don't recall what songs they were. It wasn't the whole album, but um, it was, it was incredible. And then went back to Los Angeles, continued to work on some stuff. Um, and then I received a, um, a CD that was more tracks, um, was fortunate to go into the studio again and hear them doing Teenager um, at Larrabee, which is in Los Angeles. Um, and then Teenager, if you know that song, like <laughs> is so different than anything we'd heard from Deftones at that point. So that was like such a trippy experience going in and hearing that it was like, wow, this thing is just like kind of getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, 
And then I did receive a, a like a blank CD with handwritten notes on it that is the whole record um, later. And I was just mm. completely blown away. So, like, when I think of Deftones and how the art and the music go hand in hand, like, Gore, sonically, is a very different record to Diamond Eyes, and therefore, from a design point of view, very, very, very different. Um, I guess the question that I really want to ask you is, how do you see sound? Like, how do you come up with the the visual aspect to a record and to a record like white pony so um you know in working with them in general it's it runs the gamut like sometimes i'm able to hear music um early on and that kind of informs things sometimes it's a conversation with the band and chino about like what is the vibe like what is the direction a lot of the times it comes down to like feelings and words and concepts that he gives me um you know, sometimes he has an idea, Chino has an idea of what he'd like to do for the cover. Many times there's not an idea and we kind of just, I just start riffing on stuff and making things. Um, and, you know, the times where it marries up with the music, I think that's about, you know, the relationship with the band and kind of understanding where they're at at a certain time. Um, you know, getting to hear some music definitely informs that. With Gore, I was able to hear music um, prior and then Chino had the idea about the flamingo so it was just about implementing that uh with diamond eyes in particular i didn't i don't think i heard anything but it was just about wanting to create another um kind of iconic powerful image um mm. and then white pony was the most probably involved of all of them where it was like i just kind of described it was like receiving bits of music sending images back and forth kind of having an idea beforehand um I wanted to take it in this really clean aesthetic, um, very different from what was happening at the time uh, and maybe kind of a little unexpected. And I think the music was going there too. So that was a nice marriage of kind of just the visuals and the music progressing at the same time and um, everybody kind of fire, firing on all cylinders. So you say feelings, concepts and words. Yeah. And I know, I know I'm taking you back 20 years now. Yeah. Do you remember any of those feelings, concepts and words that were specific to White Pony? You know, I, I don't necessarily in, in regards to White Pony and only because we had the kind of the, the title and the icon going into it. So at that point, it was just about what kind of what's the aesthetic that I'm bringing to it. Um, I, I, you know, Chino's always been interested in things kind of like being classy and sexy um, and uh, against the kind of like perception that that it's, you know, aggro and hardcore, like things we've tried to do with the band is always tried to be kind of just like a, a level up and just very like very clean and beautiful. So I, I think there was talk about that, um, you know, the overall concept was kind of just um we wanted to create a little bit of mystery almost like a propaganda style like you know kind of what is the white pony what's it talking about um who you know who's behind it type of thing um so i think that was kind of more the vibe so um i wanted to ask as well because at the time white pony as a record was such a departure for deftones but also it was so the antithesis of what was going on at the time so against the grain right so when deftones were coming out with white pony like it couldn't be more different to you know kid rock and being all about the nookie and those kind of things totally. and i, I love me some biscuit man like fully unapologetically but from a design point of view with biscuit on significant other having that big graffiti art and so bold and brash and in your face and deftones musically were bringing in the bits of dj shadow or a uh, massive attack and things like that that were going on that were a bit more adult and contemporary at the time was the design uh, to be the antithesis of the time and go completely against the grain I, I think that in hindsight it definitely was i think you know i think they definitely had that idea i had that idea with maybe out even with without even knowing it um but yeah, we've always wanted to do things differently, you know, not follow the herd. Um, you know, if there's ever a time where we can be left of center, we try to do that. Um, and I think with that record, for sure, like, I think it was a, you know, a good marriage of like, um, 
I was interested in that kind of like approach at the time and it, it really fit well with what the band wanted to do. And then when they made this record that was so kind of monumental and, and different, then things really started to be like, okay, yeah, you've got like these bands over here doing this thing. And then we've got these guys, uh, Deftones doing what they're doing. So I think it, it really worked out. So two last questions. Yeah. First one, imagine Master of Puppets with a different album cover. Can't, can you? Like Not at all. that that is entirely how an entire generation plus feel about White Pony. Like is that a head fuck to to cut to cut to come to terms with as a designer that something you've put out there in I mean obviously it's helped by the fact that the record is a classic amongst yeah. classics but to have created something like that's got to be a head fuck it's cool you know it's it's almost like i didn't know any better like you know putting the pony very small in the corner was kind of like one of my first kind of thoughts i have some other comps where like it's it's larger uh, and there's more things going on and you know so if it's almost like not knowing what you're going into, like not knowing that record was going to be as huge, you know, for me, it was already like a huge thing because I was such a fan of the band. So getting to work with them was already like, I've already like, you know, made it. It's amazing. Um, so, you know, there's all those kind of like things to overcome and you have to just trust your instincts. Like, I think if you tell, if you think about it, on the outside and you say this is going to be this huge record and you have to do something so amazing and people are going to talk about it 20 years later then you kind of just get frozen um so i was you know i'm lucky in the fact that like i just was kind of young and naive and just went into it like thinking what would be the best thing to do um but yeah it's it's pretty amazing um to have people look back on it and reflect on it like that and all the tattoos and you know i mean i feel really blessed to have been a part of it to um and to have people kind of like really understand what we were going for you know like uh what what makes it so timeless do you think i think you you kind of nailed it like i think you know and i've said this in the past i think everything came together it was an amazing album um you know good imaging um a, a great time for the band a great time for music and i think people can i people just really could grasp the concept i think like i think it was um a solid icon it was like you know people you saw it and you remembered it um i think honestly it has a lot to do with the music it's like you know if if a, an album is memorable and makes a makes a uh an impression then you know i pretty much automatically the visuals that go along with it are going to be regarded um but it, you know coming to understand that people really, you know, enjoyed looking through the CD book and seeing how we married up the like kind of gritty textures and kind of more punk rock DIY approach on the inside mixed with the kind of clean aesthetic outside is nice. Like people put to really took the time It made a dent. Like I have people hitting me on Instagram all the time, like saying, you're the reason I got into design. You know, you're the reason I uh, quit my job and went to art school. And those comments are like, you know, mind blowing. Like, you know, I was that same guy looking through liner notes and stuff. So it was, it was pretty amazing. And, and you went completely the other way with back to school, Com like completely the other way when the EP came out and the art was kind of cartoony and, but still, it, right. but still totally different to everything at the time. Cause it was, it was embracing like a bit of Japanese culture and some other things that was going on there. Like, like to turn on a dime when you had something so successful at the time crazy well what's funny about that is that was a tour poster that we did for that um for that tour and i hired this illustrator to come up with like the kind of like cheerleader uh person i designed the rest of it um deftones incubus and taproot i think it was but then they made it into um like a you know a promo or or a, a uh, an ep type of situation took the cover up which which i thought was cool it wasn't intended to be a, a cover only a tour poster um but it worked yeah yeah uh th that tour in the uk was linkin park and taproom okay so, Linkin park okay so um final question then i wanted to ask you about because you like you are still on the cusp of 
like exactly where design is right now and i love right. seeing that i love seeing that applied to heavy music so i love the higher power record anyway right. but the art the art is so 2020 it couldn't be so fur couldn't be further away from skulls fire and motorbikes right so what's your take on where imagery is within heavy music in 2020 good and bad my take is that it's amazing like i'm more inspired by that stuff than i've ever been i think that like there's no boundaries anymore um i'm really into uh i mean instagram is a great platform for um for visuals and and seeing uh what's out there and i think bands have really uh embraced that um and i feel like there's really no boundaries i'm like more inspired now than i've ever been on the artwork that's happening and um you know, I think it's just, it's quite amazing. Uh, and it's actually funny to see how other bands have adapted what are traditionally, you know, heavy metal uh, type of, or, you know, metal or rock aesthetics, you know, I feel like there's the yeah. genres are so blurred now, you know, like go on Spotify and you could see a, an album by, you know, um, Travis Scott or somebody, not Travis Scott, because he's not doing that, but you know, any urban hip hop or whatever. And it's, uh, it's got visuals that could be for any, um, kind of metal band or anything so i think it's great do you think it's all bleeding into one it's kind of like kind of how streaming culture made us less tribal as listeners right you used to have to buy all music so you were kind of like i like metal or i like this yeah like where everything's blurred into one another is that true of design as well i think so man and i think it's more inspiring than ever yeah and i think that's the way it should be i don't think um i think that's what's so cool about right now is that there's no boundaries you know, and I, I keep trying to do that. I'm like more passionate about art and design and photography now than I've been in 20 years. And I just want to, you know, keep doing it. Frank, honestly, mate, it's an absolute honor having you on the show today for on behalf of everyone who has got those Deftones tattoos. Like, thank you for so your work cool. over the year, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate you reaching out. And I, I honestly appreciate talking about it and being recognized. It's a, an amazing part of my life. So thank you.